Good morning. Our worship today comes from the little church of St Hilary's Overstock by the River Dee and I'm recording it on a very beautiful evening. Our worship follows our order for morning prayer which we've used on several occasions and I invite you to respond to the words that you will see on the screen. So this is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Wherever we are today, we have come together as the family of God, in our Father's presence, to offer him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive his holy word, to bring before him the needs of the world, and to seek his grace, that through his Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to his service. Jesus said, the first commandment is, listen Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other command greater than these. We take a moment for reflection. You may want to pause the video as you think and pray about this last week and the things that you want to bring to God in prayer today. So let us confess our sins to the Father and seek his pardon and peace. Almighty and merciful God, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with all our heart, and we have not loved others as Christ loves us. We are truly sorry. In your mercy forgive us. Help us to amend our lives, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you and set you free from sin. Strengthen you in goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. We sing to you, O Lord, and bless your name, and tell of your salvation from day to day. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Worship the Lord. All praise to his name. And so we offer our praise and we offer ourselves as we come before God now in the words of the hymn, Just As I Am. to use now another song or canticle. This one is known as the Venite from its Latin name. Please join in the refrain and the alternate verses. Come, let us worship and bow down. O come, let us sing to the Lord, 
Let us heartily rejoice in the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving and be glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have moulded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Come, let us worship and bow down. Paul Whittaker from Overton will bring us our readings this morning as well as playing the piano for our hymns and for the introduction and the end of our service. We thank Paul for all of his contributions to this service and to the others that we've recorded. The first reading is taken from Isaiah. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving a seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy, and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. And before our second reading, we're going to share in the words of another canticle, the one known as Benedictus, a traditional canticle for morning prayer. And again, please join in the refrain and the alternate verses as they appear on the screen. You have raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of David. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. For he has come to his people and set them free. The Lord has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us, to show mercy to our forebears and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous before him all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You have raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of David. The second reading is taken from Matthew. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the lake. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. 
and the seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. Hear what the Spirit says to the church. Thanks be to God. Do you like stories? Your response to that question may be an enthusiastic yes, or it may be a more guarded, well, it depends what you mean. Story might, of course, imply fiction. It's probably the first thing you thought of. But even if you think of novels, there are a huge number of genre. Do you prefer sci-fi or crime, romance or thriller? Of course, a lot of these translate into the stories that we see on our screens, in traditional film and in television box sets, or, if you can remember it, the theatre. But then we could say there are other kinds of stories. The story of the natural world, the story of engineering, the story of science, and then what we call history, the story of nations, but also the story of societies, the story of power, but also the story of the marginalised, which is a useful reminder that story is not always the same as fiction, but maybe every story involves some interpretation. Stories are our way of making meaning of the world. Maybe your parents told you, don't tell stories. Well, when we say that Jesus was a storyteller, we don't mean that he told lies. Far from it. He told the truth. But sometimes he told it enigmatically. And his stories can be difficult to interpret. We try to interpret them because we know that they are teaching stories or parables. When I was at theological college, we were told that the point of parables is that they have one simple meaning. But biblical scholars still debate that. If Jesus had wanted his teaching to be really simple, wouldn't he have just said exactly what he meant instead of telling stories? The thing about stories is that they excite the imagination. They open up possibilities. They intrigue and amuse us. Stories are an invitation to reflect, to engage. They are so much more than a teaching point or even an illustration. The parable that we have heard this morning is usually known as the parable of the sower. At one level it's a snapshot, a brief video perhaps. A sower went to sow. It couldn't be more straightforward. As we watch the seeds being broadcast, the original meaning of that word, we see them landing in different places, on the path, on the rocky ground, amongst the weeds at the side of the field, and in the ploughed field itself. 
This is what you would expect with traditional farming methods. Some of the seed will be wasted on the edges of the field, but most will fall in the good soil and be fruitful. Some of it very fruitful, as Jesus poetically says, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Although the sower lends his name to the parable, it's the seeds that Jesus is interested in, it seems. So this could be called the parable of the seeds. Despite the fruitfulness of the main crop, Jesus draws our eyes to the fate of the seeds that fall along the margins. On the beaten earth path, the seeds can't germinate, they're eaten up by the birds. Amongst the rocks, there isn't much soil, so the seeds are scorched by the sun and they die. Where the seeds fall among thorns, they don't stand a chance. Let anyone with ears listen, says Jesus. The problem, as Jesus knew full well, was that people don't listen. They might hear and they might react, but some of those reactions will be overreactions, defensive or aggressive. Jesus encountered a lot of people who didn't like what he was saying. So at a simple level, remembering that rule that I was taught at college, this parable is saying that some people will be fruitful in their spiritual lives and some won't be. Some will be like beaten earth, hard and unreceptive. Some will lack depth and soon give up. And others will be so distracted by the weeds and the thorns of life that they will never come to anything. This is essentially the message that is driven home in the explanation which follows the parable. The seed is the word of God and we are the different types of soil. So now this could be called the parable of the soils. Which kind of soil are you? This is the way that this passage has traditionally been taught and at a devotional level it could be quite helpful to think about how receptive we are to God's word. Do you harden your heart to God? Are you somewhat shallow or are you simply too distracted? There may be something significant here for you and that's the way that story works. The fact that this is the only parable to be given such a detailed explanation does make some people question whether this interpretation comes from Jesus originally. Did Matthew or someone else in the early church add this? Why is this parable given an interpretation when others aren't? And a detailed one at that. I'm not sure that we can know absolutely the answer to these questions. But as we emerge from lockdown in our context today and look to the future, many Christians are asking what we might learn from this time and what the future of the church might be in our country. Assuming that we want to be fruitful, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty, what do we need to do now? I think the answer is simple and beautifully illustrated in this story. Keep broadcasting. The picture of the sower generously and indiscriminately scattering the seed reminds me that Jesus often puts God at the centre of his parables. The shepherd, the father, even maybe the Samaritan, and humorously, the unjust judge. So maybe this is the parable of the sower after all. Because God's example of apparent foolishness is to scatter the seed everywhere, even though he knows that some of it will not be well received. One of the lessons of lockdown 
for me, related to trauma healing, is that we need to find ways of telling our stories and of listening to one another as we do so. Some of our stories will have God at the centre of them as we have learned new ways of being with him or as we have struggled to find connection with him at all. Stories of lament will be heard alongside stories of success. How long, O oh Lord, how long, as well as thanks be to God. That is as it should be, and it reflects the biblical witness. Life is not all one thing or another, and lockdown life has been no different. But it is as we tell our stories and as we are listened to that we can find acceptance, healing and hope for the future. This parable is essentially optimistic. Focusing too much on the problem areas of the field makes us forget that it is a parable about growth and fruitfulness. Some of the seed is wasted, but much of it is not. So as we return to our churches and, God willing, to some form of normality, we need to continue telling the story of God and offering people his good news. As we broadcast it, some will not hear it. Some will reject it, but some will accept, become part of God's great harvest. People love stories, so let us not be afraid to tell this story. Amen. So now I invite you to join with me in declaring our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now Ed Sample from Oberstock will bring us our prayers from just outside the church building here. The response to the words, we bow our knees before the Father, is from whom every family takes its name. Father, we have come from you and we take our life from you, your hand. You have placed us in families, not of our choosing, but of our, your giving. You have entrusted us to each other. As we think now of the families that nurtured us, we pause to give thanks or to grieve or to be angry at the least to recognise that we have been shaped by our families. We bow our knees before the Father, from whom every family takes its name. One description of the Church is a family of God. Lord, you see us in the Church loving and squabbling, fighting and forgiving, and living out all the dynamics of human family life. We take this as both a privilege and a problem and ask you to inhabit our life together so fully that hostility is squeezed out. Be our vision, our strength, our companion so that we never try to take back the life of your church and claim it as our own. In silence now, we hand over to you any particular issues facing us as your church family together plans, problems, people in need, whatever is on our heart. We bow our knees before the Father, from whom every family takes its name. 
we sometimes wistfully speak of the family of nations, expressing our belief that this is how it should be. But we know that the family matters at this level often become very bitter and violent in different parts of the world. We pray, Father, for your peaceful spirit to permeate the hearts and minds of the leaders of the nations, the elders of the family, on whom so much rests. Particularly, we pray for you to your servants, the gift. We bow our knees before the Father, from whom every family takes its name. Father, we have prayed for answer. What we should have prayed for, remember. What we regret, forgive, and what we are, bless. For Jesus' sake, Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, in speech and in sign we boldly pray, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Collect for this fifth Sunday after Trinity. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of the Church is governed and sanctified. Hear our prayer, which we offer for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry they may serve you in holiness and truth, to the glory of your name, through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen and the Collect for Grace. Please say this with me if you would like to. O Lord and Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, we thank you for bringing us safely to the beginning of this new day. Defend us by your mighty power, that we may be kept free from all sin and safe from every danger, and enable us in everything to do only what is right in your eyes, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing together the hymn, Forth in Thy Name, O Lord, I Go. Sunday of lockdown and we've just heard that we may be able to return to our buildings next week however there is some work to do before that can happen so please pray for your church committees and for the Mission Area Conference as we make some decisions and preparations and listen out for more news but I think that having heard the sermon this morning we will also need to keep broadcasting, so do keep checking back for Sunday services uh, through this medium. And now let us pray for God's blessing on us all. The Lord bless us and protect us from evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Wherever you are going now, go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.